And he's traumatized from his youth, and it's certainly a fundamental fear you're gonna lose your parents. He's raised by someone else who's lonely and angry, and there's a goodness in him. He wants, he wants to right wrongs. And he has all the vulnerabilities and all of the flaws and all of the human drama that any human being has. He's not perfect, and he's not impenetrable. He's uh, a man, not a superman. It's a perfect character, it's a perfect story. I, I wanted to add mythic qualities to our story of Batman. And so there is a struggle for Bruce Wayne to find his identity in so far as why he ever became Batman. To look back in his past as a child and the events that happened to him and why he became Batman. He has a choice as a man now whether to continue to be Batman or not. Why does a man do this? It's as if he's cursed to pay some great penance. Now what crime could he have committed to deserve a life of nightly torture? It's more than just professional interest, isn't it, Chase? Val Kilmer was to me a much more mysterious and romantic and coolly aloof Bruce Wayne. Very different than Michael Keaton, although they're Batmans in the costume with the voice doing the stunts was pretty much the same. You look at Val Kilmer and you think, what the hell's that guy thinking? Because certain actors have that thing where you look at them and you know the wheels are turning in there. Val Kilmer felt more haunted but heroic. Well, also, yeah. Val Kilmer, he's rich. Yeah. You walked into a room, you realize this guy's a billionaire, and people are attracted to him. Yeah, he was, he was comfortable with his wealth, where Michael Keaton's interpretation was he was never comfortable in his, in his own skin right. and never comfortable with all of this stuff, which had basically come from his parents. Right. I killed them. What did you say? He killed them. Two-Face. He slaughtered that boy's parents. No. No, you said I. I killed them. The things that are most fantastical about Bruce Wayne have to do with basic American dream ideals. He's disgustingly wealthy. He's so wealthy it never comes up. What he chooses to do with his free time is, is fight an, an impossible battle against the crime of a city that's corrupt. It's very wild, very radical, very political. This is a guy who, who can't just take off the mask and the cape and put it away. It's going to creep into his everyday life. It's going to be causing repercussions in his everyday life. And we wanted to explore those. You have a thing for bats? Oh, that's a Warshack, Mr. Wayne. An ink blot. People see what they want. I think the question would be, do you have a thing for bats? It's a classic character now, and people are still uh, enthralled with it. It's kind of become, especially with Val stepping into the shoes now, it becomes even more classic because you have Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, and then who knows who else will, who will play the role. So it seems to be almost like a James Bond, but a different kind. Batman's all about doing and action. And these incidental things that come up where he's got to stop and talk to people. He'd rather not. And I, I like those scenes a lot. He likes Chase, but why'd you call me here? And he wants to go. It's a, it's a really good screenplay. The sadness is that this man who can never be healed, right. if he was, it would be a terrible thing for the city. It would be a loss for the city if he was healed. So he sort of needs to maintain his, uh, his psychological problems for the sake of everybody else. And I think deep down he has to know that. 